tonight we're talking about New Year's resolutions with Mangizi and Jonathan and why sometimes we stick to them and sometimes we don't and some useful tips. Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. I'm Talana Simpson. Monge Azim Tati here. And tonight we are looking at how do we move from our current selves to our future selves. We have um, a guest in the studio, Jonathan Dix. Welcome. Hi. Venus, um, <laughs> you've got quite <laughs> a varied background. I mean, you, you've studied sports psychology, you worked a lot with the youth, you've done branding, um, you even said you've got an interest in law. Yeah, that, it's just an interest for now. I don't know much <laughs> beyond that. <laughs> Which is, I thought it was interesting. But yeah, you, we were talking to you um, a bit about this current self versus future self. And then it came up like, how, how New Year's resolutions? This is the time of the year. I mean, we're doing our first show for the year, which is all very exciting. And it's that time of year, being early January, where people are talking about the year ahead. There's something about the end of the year and the Losing start. Losing the Christmas weight. Yeah, what, you know, oh, yeah, what are, know what's your that. New Year's resolution? <laughs> and how many jokes How many jokes go around about New Year's resolutions? Well, you mentioned that. I've got one. I'm just going to hold it up to the camera. It's pretty funny, I think. Uh, can you... Two seconds. I'll just hang it up there for a bit. So it's quite interesting. It's got New Year's resolutions for 2009 crossed out, 2010 out crossed out. 2011 crossed out and now it says 2012 and number one is <laughs> lose weight which is in the, which was the 2009 goal the 2010 goal was lose more weight <laughs> which the malls crossed out and now it's the 2011 <laughs> goal or to, 2012 goal is lose weight again <laughs> yeah, and it goes, and it on goes from through there. yeah a whole list has <laughs> definitely something worth uh, just having a good laugh at yeah it's just so funny how, and that's, I think that's what happens though, is every year we sound like we need to lose weight, we need to get fitter, we need to stop smoking, we need to remember people's names. That was one I've <laughs> put on my list for this year. In the first place, I mean, what is it? What is it about the start of a new year that makes people want to change things they wouldn't have generally wanted to change in, say, September, October of the previous year? I don't know, I found that yeah. when I got to September and October of the last year, I was waiting for the new year. <laughs> I knew that Christmas and uh, the festive period was coming up and you, you were so consumed with work at the time because yes. you're finishing so off, many deadlines. you need to finish off on a strong note and then you automatically, in the beginning of December, you start planning for 2012 or the following year. So you kind of yeah. get carried up and sure, that three week or four week break or however long you take off is just what you need to relax, recharge the batteries and then and reflect and then start yeah then start and, looking and back I, I think it is it's, the, it's closing of one door and opening of another there's we make such a big thing about the end of one year and the start of another I mean who, everyone talks about what do you do on New Year's Eve yes. you know, how are you going to celebrate how are you going to see the New Year's in so isn't that part of it it's like because it's such a big change I don't know what time wise that it's like we start thinking well time's moving I think I mean that that's definitely one of the things but one of the other things I'm seeing is the fact that People, we don't push ourselves enough as people generally. So we need something else, which seems an external force that everybody's talking about in order for us to make the needed change, which we would have made or could have made prior to that time. So it's you also, that's also, what I'm, that's also what I'm realizing. I know the we, problem, sorry, that I have with that external force is that it's not in your control, that you're placing a lot of emphasis and on... And then it only comes once a year. ...on something else <laughs> yeah. where... You're not in control, and if it doesn't happen, you've got something to lay the blame. But really, it should stand at uh, the blame should stand with you for not um, taking enough control. But isn't that then why New Year's resolutions? We we have so many jokes about it because they don't seem to last. They don't seem to work because they, it's this external force. The year's ending, the starting. Oh, we've got to set New Year's resolutions. It's a new year. We have all this energy to do it, but we don't actually really think about it through. So comes you know June, July, August, September. We haven't done anything. <laughs> haven't done anything, in fact. And then it's like, oh, we get, oh, yeah, next year, I'll, I'll, I'll oh. add that to next year's list. <laughs> I don't know, what got, what got me thinking was um, I just got this nice little toy in front of me and I was playing with apps and I'm a big fan of TED. Yeah. And the one talk that I saw which really caught my attention uh, was a guy called uh, Daniel Goldstein. And he talks about, from a financial aspect, your current uh, versus your future self. And really says that, you know, the current self holds all the chips. It has the voice and the power, mm. whereas the future self doesn't yet. It's the future self that really needs to have 
some emphasis and thought placed upon. Otherwise, by the time you get to that future self, you are wondering why you spent so much time wasting mm. uh, that time to where you got to that point in your future self, essentially. And while he talks on the finance side, I thought the big bugbear for me is my health. And as I was mentioning earlier, I've been able to lose weight successfully, but I've also been able to gain it. And I've always been able to gain a little bit more. So I thought, well, let me put a spin on this and just say that my future self that I want to be from a health perspective is definitely not what I am right Question now. Question on that, on the regard, with regards to weight loss, because I'm also reading a book now on, um, on weight loss. In fact, it's a book by Tim Ferriss called The For Our Body, which he refers to as body redesign as opposed to weight loss. The mm -hmm. weight that you gain, is it good weight or bad weight? Is it muscle or is it fat? Uh, Most of it. Yeah, for me, it's <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> been fat. <laughs> um, I had muscle at one stage, but um, I then got comfortable. I had achieved the goals that I'd set out for myself. And this brings me to another point, goal setting. I don't find, it's, find it a, a bit counterproductive, at least for me personally. But I find that a lot of people set their goals and achieve them. And then what? Um, they either haven't been able to almost reinvent themselves so that they're then looking to the next um, challenge or they get too comfortable and that's what happened with me. They got comfortable. Um, I sat back on my laurels and thought, well, I'm fit now. I'm healthy. I've lost this weight and let me take a month off. And a month became four months, five months. And uh, that even the four hour body plan yes. definitely wasn't looking good for me. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, it's to to go off a bit on a, on a tangent about the goal setting. I don't think the problem for me is not so much the goal setting. I think the problem for me has become the fact that the idea of goal setting, well, I've been taught that since grade 10. You know, yes. it has been spoken about since grade 10. Yes, and, if something, and if something is spoken about that many times, it becomes a cliche and loses its essence. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... One of the things that I do now since reading a book by Howard Mann is something called goal, is something called putting together a goal jumping plan. So you put, you think of a timeline, probably see yourself in 10 years from now, see mm -hmm. yourself in five years and think of how you want to get to that 10 or five year goal in the next year and work your way toward the next 90 days or the next 12 months. And you're always working toward a 90 day, a 90 day goal jumping plan effectively to always reach to reach a certain level to, re to reach the year to reach the five year to reach the yes, ten year yes so it's, it's having that longer term thinking which is which i think you were saying the, the short term goals if it's just a short term oh let's go do the race in three months mm. time it's wonderful to have that point of focus and we get so much done but then when the race is over oh then what then what so so that's quite interesting how it man's forward what's it Goal jumping goal plan. Goal jumping <laughs> plan is to go into the future and come back or what do you need to do and then but but then still have the three month goal. Yes. In the next three months I'm gonna achieve XYZ, but it's it's got a longer term vision behind vision it. That no, it's going I mean I towards. can definitely subscribe to that. I mean I saw uh, another video by a chap called Richard St. John and he talks about a path to success, but it's not necessarily a path in that you sort of have building blocks and then you reach it and then what happens after that? It's more it becomes almost a way of life and you have to be not necessarily good at everything, but you need to be mindful that everything plays a role and plays a part so that while you're achieving your success, you've got those particular factors all sort of working for you. As soon as you start dropping one or two balls here and there, you start to fall further down that ladder. It becomes an all and sort of encompassing principle, essentially, which I like. He talks about sort of eight points, uh, passion, push, work, focus, ideas, improve, serve, and then persist. And if you look at those eight elements, um, you know, each of them has their own little particular role to play in helping you move forward, which in some ways persist could be beyond the 90 days of this particular yes, principle. Yes. Uh, focus could be every 90 days you're refocusing. And I think mm. my suggestion for people on that, which I like, is if 90 days isn't good for you, work on a, a time period that's comfortable for you. Could be Because you don't want to set yourself up for failure before you've yes, had a chance. Yes. But the, 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 the interesting thing, again, about the goals jumping plan is it's not so much, it's, it doesn't so much put together a regimen, but it enables you to see to step outside of yourself for a moment, outside of the dream, 
in mm -hmm. inverted commas for a moment mm -hmm. and see exactly what it would take for you to make that million rands or that million dollars in three months or six months. You know, how many, how many hours would it involve? Yeah. How much investment would it involve? Um, and you take a look at, you, you would basically look at what, what, you what you'd have to do in business or your work and what you'd have to do in your personal life. What shifts and adjustments would you have to make in order for you to reach that one goal? And should you or should yeah. you not reach that one goal, you then go back and have a look at whether you did or did not do any of the things you had set yourself out to do in order to achieve that and you replan again. I mean, I think you bring up an important point about planning. I think a lot of people, including myself, set goals and are not specific enough um, or leave a lot of room open for, I'd say, abuse. But it's really personal abuse because you would start negotiating with yourself <laughs> when you don't achieve hold a certain... Hold yourself to don't ransom. Really yeah, you do hold yourself to ransom. <laughs> and, you know, you've, that suddenly... You start, um, well, by then you start to sort of move down that whirlpool. Um, and I just find that by having a proper plan in place and r taking that step back and looking at yourself, you're able to readjust if you need to. If it's not working, maybe it's because I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. Yes. Or just the, passion the activity. About, yeah, yeah, passion is very important. I mean, it doesn't, yes, yeah, you talk about work. It could be, you know, if, I'm, if I don't like being in the gym, I shouldn't force myself to have a gym contract to get fit because I'm going to hate going to gym because I don't like the environment. Rather find so the exercise run that outside you enjoy. Or, yeah. And so there's, and, and, and having that step back is really evaluating and helping you move forward in the best possible way. And speaking of taking a step back, we started out with your future self versus, versus your current self. Mm. How do we define the two? Well, the, the current self, I think, sure, is, it's, it's where you're at right now. And you by 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 evaluating that you can, that's that's really the f reflection time. I think your future self is an ideal state of where you want to be. Um, do I want to be healthy and fit at 75, 80? Uh, most definitely. What is? I have a picture in my mind of what that is. I want to be clubbing at 75. Oh jeez, <laughs> make no mistake, Abitha, here I come. But um, but but also from a financial aspect, do I want to be retired and or do I still want to be working? my butt off so that I can, you know, just make ends meet. Um, the, you, you mentioned earlier about personal relationships. I mean, do you want to uh, get to the end of your life, perhaps uh, a lonely individual, or do you want to be, not have like crowds of people around you, but but valuable and genuine, yeah, authentic yeah. friendships? So, so for me, it's, it's, it's the whole concept of understanding where are you now and where do you want to be? So the, the current versus the future is getting that sense of the gap. Okay. And the tough part and about it's, 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 it's acknowledging that, that where you are now is not exactly where you want to be. Because so if it is where you want to be, then your future self and current self would be the same. Yeah. But we tend to always want to be more, explore yes. more, express yeah. more, do more. I mean, and the tough part is that uh, your current self is fueled in a world that loves instant gratification and wants reward now. So that million dollars, if it doesn't come in three months, I'm going to throw my toys out the cot. Yes. And you're not going to think about um, a, perhaps an investment plan or uh, what the effects of eating McDonald's will do further down the line. You want the McDonald's now. You want the Porsche now. Um, whereas in 10 years' time or longer, depending on what, what your uh, particular challenge is. That instant gratification also is the quick fixes. Yeah, there must it be is. a quicker, easier way to do this. I mean, sometimes there isn't. There's like diets and uh, diet, diet pills. And I mean, uh, that's from my, from my experience. Yeah. I'm not saying that it works, but I mean, the there's the exercise and, the, and changing your actual diet, whereas the quick fix is trying to think, oh, if I pop this pill, but don't change anything else. Yes. So, so yeah, that's your question with the, the current versus future. But I think what we were also saying, one thing that, that stops us from getting to our future self that we want to be is that that looking for the instant gratification quick fix now which links to that short-term um thinking so it's also okay i want to get fit let's have the, this race so you pick a date three year, you know whatever race is coming up and that's the race you train for and you lose all the weight and you eat for that race but then the race is finished you gain it all back again Depen depending on depending yeah, on how well because and that's something we're <coughs> talking about so I mean, a larger amount of it is, is also self-discipline i mean if i have to be completely frank with myself it's that my discipline is not where i would like it to be in particular when it comes to my health and weight so there's an element about that and but but now i mean what i'm what i'm realizing when we talk about discipline discipline always seems 
difficult for me. It always seems as though it's this regiment <laughs> that I have to follow <laughs> have and, to do this. and whip myself as an army corporal would it's when, when it probably shouldn't be. It's and difficult I, initially because it's not something you're used to. It's not something uh, that it, it, I mean, Daniel Goldstein speaks of it being like a muscle that needs to be trained and developed. So if you think of when you're at school, when you first start to do maths, you don't do the hardest part or the hardest elements of mathematics. You, you, build, you build up to it. And that's what you were talking about yes. is, is you have to develop it like a muscle. And you have to slowly but surely, I mean, you know, develop it one step at a time. Don't get ahead of yourself and be kind to yourself. You're going you're gonna to fall short along the way. And that's not the worst thing. You, don't, you shouldn't then, because of that, fall off the wagon. And that's often the mistake i But that's I've what made. happens. And that's, um, we, there's actually um, a meta program, or I think it's a meta program called, which is a technical term for a way of thinking called discounting versus counting. And what tends to happen is we discount how much we've done. So you're saying it is a muscle that needs to be exercised, but because we're starting to exercise and we're not at that end goal yet we discount that each little exercise is taking us towards that. So we give up. Yeah. Because sometimes also, it's just like, well, and I haven't got there, so I'm, uh, why also bother? Also, a lot of people I see, and you guys can hear I do it as well, is that they, they try to be there tomorrow. Instead yes. of making their life easier. So like, you know, um, you're saying like diet pills or something, you know, that's bad. You've got to do it this way. You've got to make yourself hurt. Yeah. But rather, you know, they want to do it the masochistic way <laughs> yes. get to that way. instead of going well here's a goal I can get this I can work on my I'm going to have to put effort in I'm going to do it but what's the easiest way I can make for me to reach my goal make your life I always see that sometimes people try and make their lives too hard too to hard. get their goal yeah. Yeah. too okay, much here's my goal okay now how can I plan my life to do that in, in the easiest way for myself There's you're almost cutting your nose off to spite your face, yeah. basically. I mean, sorry, just Mongezi, back to, uh, to your point about, oh, shucks, it slipped my mind now. It was, hang on, I'll, I'll come well, back to it just now. I wanted to I wanted to make a comment on what um, Tim was saying just now. For me, it's, it's also the other thing that I'm realizing, well, about myself as well as with other people that, that I speak to. It's, it's the fear. We... In as much as we want to become better people, we also fear our future self because we don't know what they're after. We also fear reaching our potential. It's the fear of reaching your potential, the fear of being a better you as well that holds Th us that back. That can be, yes. And, and I, I find that when I look at all the things that have held me back, I always come back to myself and realize that I'm only holding myself back and I can't... <laughs> see exactly how I'm doing mm. that or why I'm doing that. So it's a form of self self sabotage, if you will. Because yeah. for me, the the term or the word discipline comes. It it's oh, it looks so difficult. It looks so complex and complicated to achieve. Whereas it's probably it's probably more in my case consistency than discipline. Because I can start something. And it's a matter of now becoming mm. consistent Systems and doing it, it doing over it. and over again, which establishes the discipline. Also, yeah. if, you, if you think of the word discipline, it has a lot of negative, negative connotations. connotations. <laughs> yes. And I mean, maybe that's through uh, an upbringing at school. I know I was disciplined, but um, another word for it is probably self-control and the lack thereof, perhaps. Self-focus. And for me, it's kind of a choice. It's like, okay, I'm choosing to do this today. I can always choose to, and I'm choosing to eat healthy today. Yeah. Tomorrow I could maybe choose differently. But I think if you want to have it's a, a choice, and I know it's going to take me one step closer. So it's it's uh, someone is breaking the goal down into smaller mm. bits and to make uh, it easier. Also, manageable. Sorry, I just want to say I think also when you talk about discipline, a better word is habit, forming a yes. habit. good habit. Yes. Yeah. Um, which which links to lifestyle. So it's sometimes well, that's what in, I want to yeah, instead of no, looking at a, th a three like th the goal we we, we use the example of okay a race so that you can be healthy because. You know, run race in three months time, but then after the race, what then? Tend to do nothing. Mm. I mean, I've had that experience well with with <laughs> cycling. Did amazing training for the race, and then after the race ended, didn't get on my bike for months. But making it a lifestyle change. So, for example, for, for me, Pilates has become part of my lifestyle. I do it. And I'll bet it was tough times initially. Week. Yeah, and uh, we built and up from one uh, once a week to twice to, the habit to three and developing times. That muscle. And now it's such a part I that I, I create meetings around it. It's like, sorry, I can't meet you. Then I got Pilates. It's, it's just as part of what I do every it, week. I, I was at a financial talk um, a couple of days ago, and it was about 
who do you pay first when you get your paycheck on the 25th or the 30th or whenever you when get you paid? Get and generally, it's you try and draw money out of your account so that you can uh, <laughs> I don't know, at least have some for the, before yeah. the rest of the month, <laughs> or you, all your debit orders go off. And uh, this financial advisor just said, the first, if you're looking at making a habit and a change and almost a lifestyle, planning ahead, be kind and pay yourself. Be the first person to pay, because then at the end of the month or at the end of the year, you've built up a nice reserve, and that's your own wealth. Effectively, no one can take that away from you. And that is one, looking at a retirement perspective or future, I thought that was, that was like a nice little light bulb moment for me. And it speaks to your point about moving your meetings around to sort or to fit your Pilates schedule yes. and not moving my exercise or your exercise regime or uh, to, habits to fit, yeah, to fit into what everyone else wants from you or, mm. uh, you know, like so, I mean, one of the strict things I'm going to make for myself is that I'm going to gym every Friday afternoon or evening. If I've got drinks, then uh, I'd have to cut them short or have them afterwards. Have them, after have the them afterwards. I mean, Probably have them. You know, for half treat. an hour, it's not going to be the end of the world. I can always come back. It's, yeah. And weight loss mm. becomes, weight loss is one, of those, is one of those things that always come up in many New Year's resolutions. <laughs> and, again, and again, just to step back to the book I was talking about earlier for our work week, Apart from all the other things that Chris Anderson talks about, one of the points that I've gathered is having a look at yourself, just looking at yourself now, um, without probably have your goals in mind or have your future self in mind. But before you make any change, just look at how you're living your life now. Yes. Just yeah. step outside and Take a stock have check. the yeah, just have the pizza for lunch as you normally would. Have the you know have the for McDonald's burgers as you normally would, <laughs> but take cognizance of the fact you know? that you're doing Be that, of first it. of all. And the consciousness itself is enough for you to want to make a change or for you to want to form a new habit. But then also you have better, better sense of what to change. Yeah. Yes. Because you have to eat healthy, but what... What does that mean? What does that mean for you in particular? Because for and for it seems and complicated. I mean, from four McDonald's, f from four burgers... For lunch to eating healthy, that's an extreme. That is, uh, I mean, it's, that's it's, what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it extreme changes are not the necessarily healthy. Your body the gets a shock. All nothing thinking Very much that so. came up. So it's, it's, it's like we, we tend to go black, one, you know, one extreme to to another with that. So um, and I go from four back to old burgers, maybe just to a Mac meal. <laughs> yeah, why not just You're cut down any, instead of cutting yeah. them out, and then slowly <laughs> over the next few months. And sometimes also it's not also about what you're excluding; it's what you're including. So maybe just if that's noticing what you're Going eating is then add in. minute walk. Yeah, and, and adding in some fruit. So instead of four burgers, have two burgers and some fruit. Sleep more. Have more, <laughs> drink more water. I found, oh, no, you. No, no, it is one of the most uh, important things to weight loss. I'll, I, will, I will totally agree with you there. I was actually diagnosed with sleep apnea, severe sleep apnea uh, last year in about July. And the, it, it shocked me. And I'm quite pleased I found out when I did because if I'd continued, I probably would be having like a heart attack and other problems by, well, probably in a few years' time. But I'd worked out I hadn't got a decent night's sleep for about three years. Sure. And I went for the various tests and I've now got a machine that helps me basically breathe at night so that my throat doesn't collapse and I have to snore like a freight train trying just to get oxygen. And I worked out I was, I was interrupting my sleep twice a minute, every minute, and I wouldn't even get through two sleep cycles. And the average human will have about five to six sleep cycles. And the differences are huge. Um, how it affects weight is that your body, and that's not quite on the topic, but your body secretes a, a hunger hormone or a suppressant uh, or stimulant and suppressant. So because you wake up tired, your body says you need energy. So it yeah. secretes the, the stimulant to eat more. And I know from experience that my appetite can be uh, quite epic. Ravenous. <laughs> Ravenous is uh, just the beginning. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, but it's like that for every meal. It's not just one meal. It's for every meal. And then obviously you put on weight. And then you feel tired in the afternoon. So you don't do exercise. And the cycle repeats itself. It's and the negative spin-off effects are suddenly that because you're carrying more weight, it puts more strain on your heart. Um, you're not getting enough oxygen through to your body because you're not taking enough oxygen at night. Your body's not getting rest. So it's how cycle it's, it's like it's it goes... It's ridiculous. So, I mean, I know how it, you, Tim, you're totally right. 
So, as, so as an aside. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's it, it's links to so so you've one that's supposed to taking cognizance. Of where are you now? Acknowledging that you're not sleeping. Yeah. Yes. Allowed you to gain all that knowledge to, sure. to understand the impact and then start finding the, the little things to tweak. So what are we saying? Are New Year's resolutions out? Are we, ch- you know? I don't know. I think from my personal perspective, I would, I'm going to start like this is what I'm going to do. It's, I'm just looking at, I would say yes, but I'm going to sort of put a spin on it. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at a lifestyle change, a habit. Um, and I'm looking at just doing one or two things for the year. I'm starting small. I want to build up that habit. I want to develop that muscle. And by the end of this year, I will know that I'm going to look back and I will be a lot healthier than I was at the start of it. And if that's all I achieve this year, then I'm happy with that. And then I will then make that a habit so it continues into the following year and then look at improving other areas of my life from maybe relationships or uh, work elements or more traveling or whatever the case is. But I'm being kind to myself, knowing that this has been a huge problem for me in the past, and I just want to take it step by step. I wouldn't say they're completely out. I feel, I believe that anything that pushes you to start is a good good, step. Um, So be it New Year's resolutions, be it stepping outside of yourself and taking cognizance and being conscious of what's happening around you or how you're holding yourself back. But New Year's resolutions alone or putting together a wish list of (laughs) things you want to do in a in a given year just because it's January isn't enough. Yes. You need to it is a start. You need to want it, you need to own it. Yeah. That's important. And and use the energy of the of this time of year. Yes. The energy of this time of year helps a lot, I reckon. Put that there, but then add on as we're saying, the the things like I've heard is is taking from short term to longer term planning. So maybe looking at Longer term, like you were saying, a lifestyle change mm-hmm. is very different. And then, what are the, some of the short, shorter goals? The smaller things we can introduce in yes. our lives now that would help us towards that and make it easier. That's make it bite size and bite size becomes a meal, becomes a buffet, all those becomes. Things. After all, after all, <laughs> it, it, they are your <laughs> goals. Be using the word after buffet. all, you know, it, <laughs> it's, it's your, your life lifestyle and that it's you're your building. Future you self. should enjoy it. It's for you, you know. Do it for yourself, well, it is. as opposed to as opposed to do it because something is ending or another one starting, for that matter. In fact, I'm looking at I'm looking at Seth Godin's Poke the Box workbook. Um, the three points that he makes reference to, and I'm just gonna go over the three points. So it's don't think about it, just start and keep starting. <laughs> keep starting. <laughs> Basically, get and, on with it. <laughs> and yeah, just get on and, with and it. It's get on with it, and be able to just keep track of what you're doing and how that contributes to your future self. Cool. Well, it's definitely taken a, another level to my goal setting for for this year. So <laughs> thanks, guys, for sharing. John, if anyone wants to get hold of you, how can they? Uh, get they hold can of find you? me on Facebook, Jonathan Dix. Uh, on Twitter, Jono underscore Dix. That's J O N O. And on LinkedIn. Yeah, uh, and that's all, all in your profile, as well. which is in the show notes. Yeah. But and I would yeah. maybe just encourage, I don't know, I find Ted very interesting. I'm giving them a little punt. But, uh, <laughs> oh, they are. That's and awesome. I would encourage people, I mean, I know that the app on iPad and iPhone is Lovely. free. So, and it's, it's video content and it's top speakers from around the world in various yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll expert posi- opinions. And their, their website also has all the same content. Yeah. I find it. Yeah. I find it very good, and that's. I mean, for me, that's what kickstarted me for this year, and it's lit a firecracker under my backside, and I intend to. Yeah, and we'll to get off the firecracker, and <laughs> <laughs> so it stops and me. So <laughs> <laughs> take the firecracker with you everywhere. Oh, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll put the links to the, the the TED videos that you spoke about in sure. in the show notes. But yeah, let's guys, let's keep talking about this. You can um, talk to us on our Facebook page or on Twitter, which is LT Possibility. Cool. cool. Thank you very cool. much. Thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah.